Joining me now is Alexander Bove. He is one of the students that is organizing to fight back against all the school shootings that that are happening. He's from Bethesda, Maryland. Alexander, great to have you here on Rebel Headquarters. Thank you for having me on. No problem. So let's talk about what you did after the Parkland shooting to organize at your school and beyond. Um. So immediately after the Parkland shooting, I organized a. I joined a group that was just being organized called Montgomery County Students for Gun Control. Um, our first actions were to immediately start forming plans for um, a walkout. Because um, there was a walkout that was going to happen across the nation, but we wanted to develop it into something more. So we brought around three and a half thousand students to DC to show our legislators that we're gonna, you know, come to their doorstep, um, and we're gonna show them, you know, what we think. Alex, how old are you? I am sixteen. Sixteen, not sixty. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, what what grade are you in? I am a sophomore, tenth uh, grade. Okay. Um, bless your heart, man. Uh, you've got some people that are attacking some of the students. Um, the new president of the NRA, uh, Oliver North, now famously or infamously referred to people protesting in favor of gun control as civil terrorists. In fact, he referred to the students as civil terrorists. Uh, how do you respond to that? Well, how can I be the terrorist if he's part of the group that's um, helping to contribute to the shooting up of schools? That's terrorism, not what I'm doing. Are you disheartened to see adults not acting responsibly uh, on an issue like this? Well, I am disheartened, but that is what I have grown to expect from the adults on this issue. Um, they have clearly not stepped up, and so now it's the students' turn. What was the the role, uh, your role, and the role of the group that you're in in organizing the rally on March 14th? For the rally on March 14th, our main goal was to have a lot of sort of publicity, make this the conversation for that week, um, and sort of drum up. Uh, more of a conversation about it in that week, so sort of 10 days before March for Our Lives, which obviously is much bigger and would draw more attention. But we wanted to sort of start ramping that up. In addition, um, March for Our Lives was a student event, um, and so was our event. But we included legislators. We had uh, Nancy Pelosi speak, John Lewis speak, Chuck Schumer speak. Um, we wanted to sort of have something that we could share with the legislators that agree with us, um, legislators that we need in order to make the change that we seek. And that was the goal of March 14th. When did George Soros approach you? Uh, was it when you were in junior high school? Because I'm led to believe that uh, Soros has organized all these protests and not students like you. Well, um, I guess around a year ago, he approached me, gave me a $20,000 check and said, Man, I'll send you to college if you can just overthrow the government. <laughs> I mean, people, grown ass people actually believe in insanity like that. So, I mean, you're 16. He would have had to approach you when you were almost in elementary school. <laughs> like, man, if he's that smart and he knows how good you're going to be at the age of 16, maybe he's on to something. Um, okay. Anyway, so back to planet Earth. Um, after the Texas shooting, at Santa Fe High School, there was also an action uh, on Capitol Hill. What was that? Um, so it was a very spontaneous action. My group thought we needed to have an immediate response. We can't just let the, you know, NRA try to sort of slide by unnoticed with this. We had to let the legislators know that they're still on notice. Um, we haven't had a major public act since April 20th, and. We need to stay in the picture, and so we organized a lions where some of our members uh, got arrested in front of Paul Ryan's office. Okay, um, so the people who are selling the guns that are killing the kids are not arrested, but the kids who are protesting the massacres are arrested. I just want to review for the people at home. That is exactly correct. Okay, I understand. Okay. Uh, now, uh, you also have events that are uh, coming up. What, what do you want people to do? Uh, how can they fight back? Um, so the rallies are good, but what action do you want them to take? Well, the most profound action they can take is 
primaries are going on right now. You have to vote for gun sense candidates. You see people with endorsements from organizations like Moms Demand Action or the Brady Campaign. That's who you vote for. If you want to keep people safe, that's who you vote for. And then come the general election, um, assuming those candidates win, you have to continue to support them. And, you know, it doesn't matter whether they're a Democrat or a Republican, as long as they're interested in keep getting guns off the street, in keeping students safe without the whole uh, side of turning schools into prisons, that is your uh, goal. So Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick today in Texas said he had uh, the right idea. In fact, he said this right after the shootings. He added absurdities to it today, but he said it's not the guns are not the problem. The doors are the problem. Um, that there's just too many doors in the schools. Uh, well, you go to a school right now. It, have you noticed the epidemic of too many doors in your school? Um, certainly not. Uh, the doors are necessary for the order of the day to go about. My school has two and a half thousand students. There's no way, you know, we could get people, you know, on and off the buses in a timely manner in the morning if we did not have, you know, doors. Um, and this is what I was saying earlier about turning schools into prisons. Uh, we can't do that because then we're letting these terrorists win. Yeah, um, and he mentioned other political issues and, and, of, and of course, uh, the video games, they're back. Uh, in, in Japan, where they have the same exact video games, uh, no one gets shot because they don't have guns. Uh, so do any of your friends play video games and have you, has that led to any massacres as far as you know? Uh, no, video games just don't lead to massacres. Um, I don't engage in that sort of video games, but plenty of my friends do. They're all perfectly sane people, perfectly normal people. Um, none of them would ever commit a mass shooting. Uh, but they also don't don't have guns, um, and that is, as you said, that's the defining factor in have, whether you're capable of a mass shooting. Alexander, have they ever thrown their video games at anyone or hurt him? No. No. Okay, got you. All right, because uh, yeah. Oh, right. Video games are not designed to kill people, but guns are. Right. I almost forgot there for a second. Um, I mean, look, I. I uh, say all this stuff sarcastically because the, the points that they make are preposterous. They keep circling and circling around the real issue. The real issue it's the, is that it's the guns. It's the guns that, like, so Alexander, when you're a sophomore, and you're a sophomore now in, in, in high school, right? Yeah. I don't know if you guys do active shooter drills in your school, but are you afraid of trench coats, as Hugh Hewitt said today, another right wing uh, pundit? Uh, are you afraid of video games? Are you afraid of any that God has been taken out of the school? Or are you afraid of bullets? I'm afraid of the bullets. Um, you know, I'm not afraid of the trench coat. I'm afraid of the gun under the trench coat. The trench coat is immaterial to me. Um, I don't care what you wear. Uh, I don't care what video games you play. Just as long as you're not coming into my school with your gun to kill me, that is all I care about. All right. Uh, Alexander Bove, uh, doing great work already at the age of 16. Uh, really appreciate you coming on the show. And the handle there on Twitter is Moco Students for Gun Control. I assume that that is Montgomery County and not some sort of coffee drink, right? Uh, it is Montgomery County, yes. Okay, all right. Uh, but uh, since you guys are near DC, organizing a lot of events in DC and super helpful to the people who want sanity back in this country. So thank you, Alex. We appreciate it. Thank you.